Shluchem Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. Again, welcome to our home. The um, lecture tonight on my thoughts will be titled, What Now? Well, all the holidays are over. So the question is, what do we do now? Do we just go back to where we were before? Especially in this environment, that would not be acceptable. We need to take away some positive lessons, plans that will help us and all those around us to be better, to be stronger, to be happier, and to be closer to God and all of those around us that we touch in our lives. This year has definitely been a year of instruction. One could say it was actually a year of destruction. Many people have died and many others have suffered. All of this should be a wake-up call for us as individuals and to the world in general. People talk about going back to normal. I don't think that back to normal is acceptable. The anger, hatred, and violence in the world, especially in the United States, is not acceptable. This country is much better than the image that we are portraying. If we can't smile at each other, again, wearing masks, we should at least put up two fingers of our hand as a sign of peace, as we used to do in the 60s. Make love, not war. And there's a story told of a chassid, a follower, who went to Rebbe Elimelech Lezensk to ask if he could observe the Rebbe perform his kaporis, his forgiveness. Kaporis is a ritual that we perform just before Yom Kippur. In this ritual, we take a chicken over which we recite a special prayer three times. After that, each time we say the prayer, we swing the, the bird around our heads three times. We ask God to take this bird as a substitute for the sins that we had committed this year and that we should be forgiven. The bird is then ritually slaughtered and given to the poor. This is connecting our atonement together with other mitzvot, such as ritual slaughtering and covering of the blood. In addition, there's also the feeding of the poor, an act of kindness and charity. So Rabbi Melech told the man to go visit a certain innkeeper and observe how he performs his kaparis. So the man traveled to the inn and watched the innkeeper perform all of his duties. He, he really acted just like a simple innkeeper. The man saw nothing special that would help answer his question. And so he waited until the innkeeper had closed down the inn and he hid in a corner to see what, if anything, the innkeeper would do. He didn't have to wait long. After everyone was gone, the innkeeper thought, again, that he was alone. He took out two ledgers, two books, he opened the first and began reading page after page, a daily diary of sins that he committed on each and every day. And as he was reading, tears were streaming down his face. When he finished reading the book, he opened the second book. In it, he recorded all the difficulties and travails that he had had to endure that year. His cow had died, the roof began to leak, the children had the flu and other challenges that he was forced to experience that year. When he was finished with the second book, he lifted his eyes up to heaven. He began to talk to God as one would talk to his father. He said to God, you know, the way I see it, there were many things that I did wrong this year. On the other hand, there were many difficulties that you imposed on me. So the way I see it, we both have complaints about each other. So, if you will forgive me, then I will forgive you. And with that, he took the two books, waved them around his head and said, this is my exchange. This is my substitute. This is my expiation. And with that, he threw both of the books into fire and he watched them burn. Now the man understood why Rabbi Melech sent him to view the innkeeper's atonement. It's not the chicken. It's not the chicken that brings about our atonement. It is the feelings of contrition 
and atonement. A true sense of repentance. We have damaged the relationship with our Father in Heaven. We truly want to correct it. It has to be real, not just words that we articulate without any connection to desire for reconnecting to our Father, our King. You know, we repeated these words over and over again, at least three times daily, during the Aser Shemei Tshuva, the Ten Days of Repentance. Zachreinu l'ma'ancha, remember us for your sake. We need to know and we need to believe that God wants to forgive us even more than we want to be forgiven. Just like any parent. The hardest thing that we do is discipline our children. It takes fortitude. We don't want to jeopardize our parent-child relationship. You know, we already love our children even before they were born. Even when we change a diaper or have to get up in the middle of the night. We hope that they too will come to love us as deeply as we love them. You know, the love we have for children is something that is part of nature. It's part of our DNA. The love that children have for their parents, on the other hand, is earned. It's not a given, and we cannot take it for granted. It took my wife and I three years to have our first child, a wonderful and beautiful daughter. But then five years passed, many prayers, doctors, tests, procedures. Truth is, we had just about given up hope. In fact, we had put in for adoption. As fate would have it, Dale got pregnant, with our son, about the same time the adoption was available. Having a son well, changed my whole life. I felt that God had blessed me with a son and I needed to say thank you. In addition, it forced me to look into the mirror. I thought that he would grow up to be me. And would that be good enough? The answer was no. And so I began to change my life, my lifestyle, my priorities. He was a major factor in my life. I never had a father to have a relationship with. So I really looked forward to what the future would be. But I was enjoying the present. You know, we spent a lot of time together. He was bright, talented. He talked a lot. He was entertaining. <laughs> and he enjoyed himself. The first word that my daughter said was puppy. The first word that my son said was daddy still warms my heart when I think about it. We were friends. You know, we were at my mother's house one time and my son always took advantage of her loving nature. He was hurting her and I told him to stop. He continued to misbehave. I told him I was going to count to 10 and if he had not stopped by them that he would be punished. So I started to count one, two, three, and he took over four, five, six, he doesn't remember anything else. After that, he got a spanking. We were friends, and he took advantage of the relationship. You know, after I spanked him, I went into another room, and I cried. I did what I thought was right, but I was afraid that our relationship would never be the same. I was wrong. Not only did my discipline not hurt our relationship, somehow, we actually even became closer. Our children want to know that we care, that we, have, that we have to care enough to say no at times. But our job is to love them, even if at times that love is shown through discipline, tough love. God yearns for the same loving relationship that each one of us yearns for with our children. We want to be relevant. I always tell people, you send your child away to college, and you give them enough money for a year, hmm, you'll see them once a year. Give them enough money for a month, you'll see them once a month. And this is why God had the man, the heavenly food, that fell for the Jews in the desert, fall every day. He wanted a daily relationship with his beloved children. And so every day they lifted their eyes up to heaven, to their father, for their sustenance. The Zohar tells us that this world is a reflection of the world above. If one were to ask you what color is the sky, you would reply blue. If they were to ask you what color is the ocean, you again would reply blue. 
However, if you look at air in a jar, it's really colorless. Same would be the case of water from the ocean in a jar, colorless. I'm sure that science can give reasons, but according to Kabbalah, God has a sapphire brick that he has placed underneath his throne of glory. The sky is a reflection of that brick and the ocean a reflection of the sky. We were all created but Salam Elohim in the image of God. Our love for our children is a reflection of the love that God, our Father, has for each one of us individually. This is a very special moment in history. We can make a difference. Yes, each one of us, both as a part of this puzzle that we call mankind. And this pandemic has affected all 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. Many people believe that it was spread by one woman who created, pardon me, who worked in a lab in Wuhan, China. The power of one. The whole world was created from one person, Adam, first man. You know, they tell a story about a king who was trying to capture a city. And what he did is he sent his crack commando troops against the gate of the city and they were wiped out to the man. Then he sent his infantry. Again, they were wiped out to the man. So he sent his cavalry against the gate of the city. And again, they too were wiped out. All he had left was his support troops, his cooks and bottle washers. So he sent them against the gate of the city and the gate fell. And the king with his army was able to capture the city. After the battle, the general went to see the king, expecting to see the king jubilant, but he was not. He was very pensive. And the general said to the king, what seems to be wrong? You, you captured the city. And the king said, yeah, I did. However, are you going to tell me that my supply troops, my dishwasher and cooks were my best troops? They captured the city? They were victorious? The general smiled and said, no, the commandos did what they were supposed to do. Infantry did what they were supposed to do. The cavalry did what they were supposed to do. You could have sent the Girl Scouts against the city. It just needed one more push. And with that one more push, they were successful. The power of one. Boil water to 211 degrees Fahrenheit. What you have is a hot cup of tea. Heat it to one more degree, and you can move a locomotive. I know that many of us are what I would call holidayed, holidayed out. 13 out of the last 23 days were major holidays, and two of them were fast days. Beginning with self-introspection and feelings of concern and trepidation. But those feelings were followed by feelings of joy and happiness. The happiest festival of the year. A roller coaster ride. My concern? That after all the tears and all the laughter, we look around and realize that somehow, somehow, some way, we are in the same place we were before the spiritual journey began. The question that we need to ask ourselves is, were all of my regrets, all of my resolutions, only a dream? And the only way to answer that question honestly is to ask yourself, is there something, something that I, ch I am changing? Now changing everything is not and should not be an option. It's a quick recipe for failure. However, if you decide to change something, even something small, it will make a big difference in your life and to the whole world in general. God has forced the whole world to be just a little more righteous. He's closed down the bars and casinos. Social distancing does cut down on promiscuous behavior. Due to trying times, I'm sure that more people are praying more than they ever have before. Many people are committing acts of kindness and self-sacrifice. As we have experienced in the past, many times the worst of times brings out the best of people. Let us all focus on something. Not just something that we can think about or talk about, but something that we really will do. Remember, Changing doesn't mean all or nothing at all. Changing bad habits, addictions, many times has to be done bit by bit.
feel a little success first. And then one success will bring on another success. May God bless the whole world with the coming of the Messiah, who will bring that one thing that we all need so desperately, peace on earth. May you come quickly. Thank you. Have a great Shabbos, and God bless you all. Appreciate your listening.